The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Front page news. In the nation's great tobacco markets, the famous Crosley Poll has just finished asking independent tobacco experts... What cigarette do you smoke? Over 50% more named Lucky Strike than any other brand. Yes, the impartial Crosley Poll shows... By a 50% margin over any other brand, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice. These experts are the independent tobacco buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen. The men who see who buys what tobacco at the auctions. And when independent tobacco experts like these name Lucky Strike, first choice, for personal smoking enjoyment, then you know. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke the smoke, tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, by a 50% margin over any other brand... Independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, February 14th, was St. Valentine's Day. It was also Jack Benny's birthday. So let's go back to yesterday. A lot of people are making preparations for the big event. We'll look in on some of them. The regular meeting of the Beverly Hills Beavers will now come to order. The motion before the club is resolved. The Beavers will give Mr. Jack Benny a surprise birthday party. And for this purpose, we'll withdraw our entire treasury of $1.43. I second the motion, Stevie. Thank you, Joy. But call me Mr. President. No familiarity during meetings. <laughs> Any questions? What is it, Cliff? Well, I'm a new member of the Beavers, and I'd like to know who Jack Benny is. <laughs> Are you kidding? Don't you know who Jack Benny is? No, who is he? Who is Jack Benny? He's only the greatest fullback the Yale ever had. <laughs> yeah. And he quit football because he was afraid of hurting his hands. And that would stop him from playing the violin. <laughs> That's right, Cliff. Mr. Benny's one of the world's greatest violinists. Well, if he's the world's greatest violinist, how come I never heard of him? Well, that's because he's so modest. He goes under the name of Yasha Heifetz. <laughs> Say, he sounds like quite a guy. He sure is. Why, why take the baseball uniforms we're wearing? Mr. Benny loaned us the money to get them. Yeah. <laughs> And my father says that 4% is reasonable. <laughs> well, since Mr. Benny's such a nice man, I vote that we give him the birthday party. That makes it unanimous. Now, any other questions? Yes, Mr. President. Are we going to invite any girls to the party? Cliff, since you're a new member, I'll read you part of our bylaws. Bylaws of the Beverly Hills Beavers, Chapter 12, Rule 8, Clause D. If any beaver is ever seen with a member of the opposite sex, this means girls, <laughs> he will be fined seven cents, barred from holding office in this club, and will never be allowed to have custody of the club mascot, Blinky, our white mouse. But I thought Blinky died last month. We're still keeping him. <laughs> now, let's make out our invitation list. We'll invite all of Mr. Benny's friends. Say, by the way, how old is Mr. Benny? Today he's 39. <laughs> and that proves how smart he is, too. Why? Well, he was in my uncle's class in school, and my uncle's 55. <laughs> Let's all go over to Miss Livington's house and she'll give us a list of Mr. Benny's friends. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Paul, 
Pauline, have you straightened out the living room? Yes, Miss Livingston. Oh, won't Mr. Benny be surprised when he finds that you're giving him a birthday party? He sure will. Uh, tell me, Pauline, how does my new dress look? Oh, it's lovely, ma'am. Only if I had nice legs like yours, I wouldn't hide him with such a long skirt. <laughs> Men like pretty legs, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think for years I hid mine behind a counter at the May Company. <laughs> But, you know, I'm not trying to be glamorous tonight. Phil and Don are married, Dennis is too young for me, and Mr. Benny is too old for me. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm surprised to hear you say that anyone is too young or too old for you. Why? Well, anything between the Boy Scouts and the Townsend Club is okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Pauline, I didn't know you liked men so much. Oh, I do, ma'am. Why, I like them so much that I... Well... Well, you'd think me silly if I told you what my favorite dream has been for years. No, I won't. Tell me, what is your favorite dream? That I'm a Dixie Cup in the Brooklyn Dodgers locker room. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Pauline. There's work to do. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Say, would you please tell me one thing, Miss Livingston? Uh, don't you ever go out with Mr. Benny, just the two of you alone? Occasionally. I remember one very warm night last summer when Jack drove me up to the top of Mulholland Drive. Gee, how'd you make out? Fine, I sold more good humors than he did. <laughs> now, Pauline, you set the table and I'll... Miss Livingston's residence. Just one moment, please. Miss Livingston, it's the baker. He wishes to talk to you. Oh, good. Hello? Yes, I want the cake delivered as early as possible. How many candles? 39. That's right, 39 candles and arrange them in the shape of a question mark. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Say, Miss Livingston, how old is Mr. Benny really? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. You see, Mr. Benny and I have an agreement that saves us both a lot of embarrassment. An agreement? Yes, I never tell anyone his age, and he never tells anyone my salary. <laughs> but, but, Miss Livingston, if Mr. Benny paid you so little, how can you afford this nice apartment and all your nice clothes and everything? And my mother writes for Bob Hope. <laughs> Pauline, have you arranged the place cards? Yes, ma'am. Did you order the food? Yes. Since you're serving buffet style, I ordered a turkey, a roast beef, and two hams. Well, that takes care of Don Wilson. What about the rest of the people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Livingston. Well, I better get over the invitation list and start calling. Gee, I've been trying to reach Phil Harris all day, but he's been out. I wonder where he is. <laughs> Four ball in the side pocket. Watch it, Mel. Okay. <laughs> Say, Phil, how's about coming over to my place for a poker game tonight? Gee, I'd like to, Mel, but I can't. Six ball in the corner. <laughs> hey, why can't you come, Phil? Well, it's Jackson's birthday today, and me and the boys in my band are throwing him a surprise party. Nine ball in the side. <laughs> Where are you going to throw the party, Phil? Over by, uh, over at my house. Everybody's going to have a lot of fun. I just filled the pool. Oh, it's pretty cold weather for swimming, ain't it? Yeah, but once you dive in, you don't notice it. Oh, the pool heated? No, it's filled with bourbon. Thirteen ball on the side. <laughs> you know, yesterday, Frankie, my guitar player slipped into the pool and almost drowned. Did you finally save him? Yeah, we broke his arm running him through the ringer. Seven ball twice across. <laughs> Hey, uh, Phil. <laughs> Phil, I've been wanting to ask you something. Yeah, go ahead. What is it, Mel? Well, I hate to bring it up, but I've been out of work for a long time, and I thought maybe you could give me a job. Well, maybe I can. What do you do? I'm a glass blower. Sorry, I got all the musicians I need. Two ball in the corner. <laughs> Hold it a minute. Kiss off the 12. <laughs> Yeah. Went just like it had eyes. Well, that finishes the game. I beat you 25 to 4. Gee, some guys have all the luck. 
Imagine shooting pool like that and being married to Alice Faye at the same time. <laughs> well, so long, Mel. I got to start calling the gang. Yeah, I think I'll call Dennis first. Gee, Mother, why do you want to leave the house just because I'm giving a surprise party for Mr. Benny? That's not the only reason. I've got to drive to Riverside tonight. But can't you drive there some other time? What? And spoil my truckload of oranges? <laughs> anyway, I can't understand why you have to give a party for Mr. Benny. Because he's a very nice man. Nice man. What did he ever do for you? What did he ever do for me? Well, once he... I remember when... And not only that And then there was a time he Yeah, why am I giving him a party? I think you're wasting your money on that mean old man Oh, Mother, that isn't fair Mr. Benny has been like a father to me Only last week he gave me advice on how to be popular with the girls Oh, he did, huh? Yeah, he took me aside and said Dennis, my boy, you're missing a lot You ought to get a girl and on some moonlight night Drive her over to Lover's Lane And put your arms around her And pull her up close to you Put your face close to hers and... Yes, then what did Mr. Benny say? When he got to that part, he fainted. <laughs> well, now look, Dennis. Let me give you some advice on that. Yes, Mother. Son, as you go through life, you'll meet many girls. And someday you'll meet the one girl you'll want to spend the rest of your life with. And it will probably be when you least expect it. Gee, say, Mom, how did you first meet Father? We were matched together in the Golden Gloves. <laughs> he had the sweetest left hook. <laughs> well, Dennis, I've got to be running along now. I hope your party turns out nice. Thank you, Mother. Oh, by the way, how old is Mr. Benny today? 39. 39, indeed. Why, I remember seeing him in a vaudeville act with Al Jolson when they introduced the song Sonny Boy. How long ago was that? I don't remember. But Benny was singing and Jolson was climbing up on his knee. <laughs> so long, son. Goodbye, Mother. Lots of luck with your oranges. Well, I've got everything set for the party. Now I better see if I have everybody's phone number. <laughs> dance, ballerina, dance. And do your pirouette in rhythm with your aching heart. Dance, ballerina, dance. You mustn't once forget a dancer has to dance the part. Girl, ballerina, world. Just ignore the chair that's empty in the second row. This is your moment, girl. Although he's not out there applauding as you steal the show. Once you said his love must wait its turn. You wanted fame instead I guess that's your concern Live and learn And love is gone Ballerina gone So on with your career You can't afford a backward glance Dance on and on and on A thousand people here Have come to see the show As round and round you go So ballerina dance Dance, dance I've got everybody's phone number but Don Wilson's. I'll look that one up. Oh, darling. What is it, Pudgy? I wanted to tell you that the table looks beautiful. 
Oh, thank you, dear. But I think you better start calling our guest. Well, I will as soon as I finish wrapping this present for Jack. Well, I hope you're giving him an appropriate gift. What's in that package, darling? See if you can guess. A watch? No, no, I'll give you a hint. They're round and firm and fully packed and free and easy on the draw. Of the what? Draw. A box of Crayolas. <laughs> no, 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 pet. Now, listen again, sweetheart. Take last night after dinner. I went into the living room, sat down in my easy chair, struck a match. Now, what did I light? My mother's picture. <laughs> yes, and while it was burning, what did I light with that? Oh, darling, don't be keep me in suspense. What did you buy Jack Benny for his birthday? Oh, but darling, it's so obvious. Look at these letters on the package. You should be able to figure out what it is. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Oh, I know. A long silk muffler from Tubby. No, no, no. It's, it's a carton of Lucky Strikes, and L-S-M-F-T stands for Lucky Strike Means Fine Tobacco. Oh, well, everybody knows that. Well, then why did you make me tell you? I just love the way your face lights up when you say it. <laughs> well, thank you. Now, come on, darling. Let's go through this list and see if I've forgotten anyone. Hmm, fine thing. Here it is my birthday and I'm all alone. Nobody even thinks of me. Nobody cares. No cards, not even a phone call. Who is it? It's me, boss. Rochester, I don't want to talk to anyone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. When I want your help, I'll ask for it. Boss, you haven't eaten all day. Do you want me to get... I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Okay, okay. I wonder what's wrong with him. He's kept himself locked in the den all day. The last time he brooded like this was when his girlfriend, Gladys Zabisco, broke the engagement. Then she sent back the ring and he was happy again. <laughs> wonder what scaled him. Maybe he bet on a horse. No, if Mr. Benny bet on a horse and that horse lost, he'd beat it to death with his bare hands. <laughs> just can't figure out what's the matter with him. Rochester, if you don't mind, I'll have my dinner served in bed. Well, what's the matter, boss? Don't you feel good? You've been brooding all day. I haven't been brooding. If I, don't, if I want to lock myself in the den, it's my own business. Wait a minute, boss. Huh? Have you been crying? What makes you think I've been crying? There's a rainbow in your little blue eye. <laughs> there is? I mean, who cares? A lot you or anybody else worries about me anyway. You're wrong, Mr. Benny. I worry about you. Oh, you do, eh? Well, Rochester, what day is this? Saturday. Uh-huh. Saturday, February what? The 14th. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Saturday, February the 14th. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to put out the garbage. <laughs> it's not that. Come back here. Now, let's not talk about it anymore. You go in and clean the den. I'm going to the kitchen, have a sandwich and a glass of garbage. I mean milk. <laughs> okay. Well, it won't take long to straighten up the den. I'll just put these books away on the shelf. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Well, hello, Polly. Here I am all alone. Nobody cares. Huh? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> what are you talking about? Today's my birthday. Today's my birthday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How can I be so stupid? I better go in the kitchen and fix things up right away. Uh, excuse me, boss. Excuse me. Rochester. Uh, just a minute, boss. Rochester, what are you doing? I'm putting a candle on a cracker. It's Polly's birthday. <laughs> Oh, it is, eh? Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm going to my room. That's where I'm going. Gosh, I can't figure out what's bothering the boss. He's usually so cheerful and... Hello, Mr. Benny's resident. Uh, Rochester, this is Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. You'll never guess whose birthday it is today. I know, Rochester, and that's why I called. I want to give a surprise party. A party? Yes. Do you think you'd get him out of the house? Him? Certainly. Well, he sure fooled me. He laid an egg this morning. <laughs> Rochester, what are you talking about? The parrot. Parrot? 
It isn't the parrot's birthday. It's Mr. Benny's birthday. Oh! <laughs> so that's why he's been feeling bad all day. He thought everybody forgot about him. Oh, no. When I called the gang, I found out that everybody was giving him a party. So we all decided to come over to Mr. Benny's house and surprise him. Well, bring some food with you. The time lock doesn't open the icebox till six in the morning. <laughs> Well, don't worry. We have food. You just get Mr. Benny out of the house for a little while and don't let him suspect anything. Okay, Miss Livingston. Leave it to me. I'll be clever about it. Well, I feel a lot better taking this little walk. But I can't understand Rochester throwing my hat and coat out. And when I went out to get him, he slammed the door. <laughs> Yeah, I've been walking for about 40 minutes now. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll walk across the street and get on a bus for home. Fine birthday. Hey, look at this theater marquee. Now playing The Horn Blows at Midnight. <laughs> I, I guess they're running it again on account of the Academy Awards. <laughs> I think I'll, I think I'll go and see it again. Uh, pardon me, miss. I see you're showing the horn blows at midnight. That's right. How's business? How's... Look, miss, if this is a holdup, you're wasting your time. We haven't sold a ticket all week. <laughs> this isn't a holdup, and give me a ticket. Here's the money. Here's a ticket and a knife. A knife? You'll have to cut your way through the brush. <laughs> Never mind. Just give me the ticket so I can go in, will you? Rochester, we've been here for four hours now. If Mr. Benny only went out for a walk, why isn't he back? I don't know, Miss Livingston. Well, I can't wait any longer. Bring on the food. Yeah, let's eat. Hey, wait a minute, kids. Since this is Jack's birthday party, I propose that we all give a toast. All of us? Yeah, we'll each take a line. Go ahead, Rochester. You start it. Okay. To our boss, Mr. Benny. This toast we do make. While we stand here talking, Don's eating the cake. <laughs> well, I waited long enough. I've got to go home. Me too. I wonder what happened to Jack. I beg your pardon, mister. Huh? I'm the manager of this theater. We've shown you the horn blows at midnight three times. Now, will you please go home so we can close up? <laughs> okay, okay. By the way, mister, the girl at the box office told me you haven't sold a ticket all week. That's quite true. Well, if that's true, how come there's someone sitting in almost every seat in this theater? We rent it out as a storage room to a mortuary. <laughs> a mortuary? You mean all the people in those seats are... That's amazing. I'll say it's amazing. Yesterday, right in the middle of the picture, three of them got up and walked out. <laughs> Gee, I wondered why the guy at the door didn't tear my ticket. <laughs> well, I better go on home. Gee, all the lights are out in the house. Rochester must be asleep. Now, let's see. Where's my key? Here's the key to my safety deposit box. Here's the key to my car. Key to my garage. Key to my vault. <laughs> Whoops, I dropped it. <laughs> Here's the key to the front door. Here it is. Mm, coming home to a cold, dark house. What a birthday this was. Uh, fine, loyal gig I got. I got a good notion to fire every one of them. If I had any talent, I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. Well, I might as well go to bed, I guess. Now, who can that be at this time of night? Hello? Hello, is this Jack Benny? Yes. This is Western Union. We have a singing telegram for you from your sister in Chicago. Oh, a singing telegram from my sister, eh? Well, <laughs> that's nice. Go ahead, let me hear it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jack Benny. <laughs> Happy 
birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Look, I have to go to bed. Happy birthday to you. Well, thank you very much. That was swell. Thanks. Look, I've got to go to... Happy birthday to you. Happy, 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 happy birthday happy to you. Happy, 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 happy birthday to you. Happy, 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 happy birthday to you. Look, fella, I've got to go to bed now. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Happy birthday, dear Jack. Happy birthday to you. Well, that's awfully sweet of you. Thanks very much. Look, fella, I gotta go to bed. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I... Welcome, yes, you're welcome very well. Look, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I'm, I'm awfully sleepy. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Happy well, I'll be done. Ladies and gentlemen, in certain sections of the country, a critical fuel oil situation exists, and many families may face heatless days before the end of the winter. Help maintain your family's health and conserve fuel oil by doing these things now. Keep room temperature at 68 degrees by day, lower at night. Close off unused rooms. Help stretch existing supplies. Thank you. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is Basil Rysdale. By a 50% margin over any other brand, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice. American. Back of that statement is an impartial Crosley poll just completed in 11 southern tobacco states. This famous authentic research group reveals that when independent tobacco experts choose a cigarette for their own personal smoking enjoyment, over 50% more named Lucky Strike than any other brand. Yes, the impartial Crossley poll shows... By a 50% margin over any other brand, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. These are the tobacco experts, the independent buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen who buy, sell, and handle tobacco at the auction. You've heard the poll results. Now listen to what tobacco buyer Bryce Leach of Glasgow, Kentucky recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy ripe, fine-tasting leaf. Fine, quality tobacco that makes a top-quality smoke. I've smoked Lucky 16 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. So smoke the smoke, tobacco expert smoke. Remember, by a 50% margin over any other brand, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice. Oh, it's 9 a.m. Sunday morning. Hope I have a good show this afternoon. Oh, good morning, Rochester. Good morning, boss. Feel a little more cheerful today? Yeah, yeah, I feel fine. You should have come home earlier last night. Why? The whole gang came over to give a surprise party and celebrate your birthday. What? A surprise party for me? My whole gang? Mary? You mean Mary, Phil, Don, and Dennis? Gee, they, they didn't forget me. Why, boss, that rainbow's coming back in your little blue eyes. <laughs> well, I can't help it. I'm so happy. <laughs> Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>